Hi everyone, welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Craft and a belated 1500 subscriber giveaway video. The video that follows is the opportunity we had on my winter expedition trip to take a close look at the knives that David Gray of Adirondack Knife Works provided for the trip. In addition, a contact of David's, Matt Townsend at Valhalla Custom Kydex also provided three immaculately constructed custom Kydex sheaths for David's knives. So without further ado, and because the flies are literally driving me nuts, let's get into this video. And don't forget to stick around because I got one of David's knives here to give away at the end of the video. All right, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's take a closer look at each of these three knives and the custom Kydex sheaths that have been provided by Valhalla Custom Kydex. So let's first talk about the Warthog from Adirondack Knife Works. The Warthog has a nice solid wood scale on it. It's a nice pink color, black accents, brass pins, and an epoxied handle. Now, one of the things I've noticed obviously throughout the rough use we've tried to give them this weekend is that obviously his workmanship has held up we don't have any loose scales uh, or vibrating you know parts in the knives and they're really uh, clean you know david oiled them up before he sent them out to me i oiled them up once this weekend really nice looking knife now the warthog is uh, made from 3 16 inch high carbon steel 1095 and what I like about the Warthog is it's kind of a personal carry an EDC survival or bushcraft knife on account of how how thick and rugged it is I wouldn't have any problems jamming the Warthog down into a piece of wood and trying to you know break the wood away I wouldn't have any qualms about that at all with 3 sixteenths of an inch I wouldn't have any qualms taking a stick <laughs> You know, setting it up, driving the warthog into it, and pounding it down through, the warthog's going to take it with 3 16 of an inch thick 1095 high carbon steel. It's going to take it. Now the sheath for the, for the warthog uh, made by Val Valhalla Custom Kydex, this is a dangler. So what you've got here is uh, Kydex sheath, you know, all nicely riveted together and you've got a side mount here for the dangler and it's one of the things I thought was nice about what Matt sent us for examples of his kydex sheaths he showed us one in a dangler one in a vertical carry and one in a, a horizontal but we'll get back to those in a minute one of the other things that's nice about the custom sheaths that Valhalla makes is they have a, a drainage spot you can see them there so that if any moisture does get in your knife when you're carrying it it uh, will leak away from the knife and it won't pool on the blade causing any rust or anything like that and everything uh, is made with the knife in mind it's not made uh, in one location and the knife in another David actually had to send these knives to Valhalla Custom Kydex to get them made and you can hear that custom fit on every single one so let's move on to the Huntsman the Huntsman is again 1095 high carbon steel but the Huntsman is made from 1 8 steel so it's a little bit uh, of a finer knife a finer detailed knife it's a full flat grind as well so the blade uh, you, you don't see a grind line along the side of the blade it uh, gives it a, a really beautiful look 
to the knife. You don't see that grind line. I like it in a survival knife, but in a knife like this, uh, I can see myself favoring this knife, uh, you know, for cutting up meat, things like that, and and enjoying the thinner the thinner blade. You don't really need three sixteenths of an inch to to cut through a piece of meat. You don't need three sixteenths of an inch to do feather sticking on nice soft wood. You know, you can just get it in there and get yourself some tinder material, some kindling prepared. Always look for that look for that edge when you're making feather sticks. And again, you know, I've been beating these knives all weekend and they're still performing, you know, as good as they were. The moment I brought them out of their sheaths, get some speed in there, get the curls coming. What I like about this handle too, this is a bigger handle. I don't have the beefiest hands on planet Earth, but by no means do I have super small hands. On the bigger knives, it's nice to be able to get a really big grip on the knife and to be able to really get a firm hold, especially, you know, when you're when you're coming down on the knife like that, making feather sticks. It's really handy to be able to get a good grip on it. I find the smaller handled knives like the uh, the Warthog, which we just looked at in the the ADK AKW um, trade knife, they have a smaller handle, so they're good for choking up on for doing finer work, like when I was carving on the uh, on the slingshot. So to move over to talking about the uh, the sheath Valhalla provided for the Huntsman, again the same custom fit clicks in every single time. Uh, this one here, uh, it's mounted along the side of the rivets, so that you get a vertical carry. Now I thought it was neat the way uh, he set them up, but these are all interchangeable. If I wanted to use this particular knife as a scout carry, I just have to take a Phillips screwdriver and maybe a dime or a flathead screwdriver on this side, loosen these nuts, and I could turn this on an angle and I could use it as a scout carry. If I wanted it right-handed, I would move the belt clip over to this side so it was facing my, my back and then it would be right-handed scout carry. If I wanted it uh, left-handed scout carry, I would leave it on the same side but I would turn it 90 degrees and then it would be right-hand scout carry. So when you get uh, one of these from Valhalla Custom Kydex, he might send it to you vertical setup but if you want a scout carry, you can change it over. And if you happen to have uh, one of his uh, sheaths with a, a drop loop, that can be interchange with any of his other sheaths too. So that's really handy. So let's move on and take a look at the Adirondack Knife Works trade knife. Okay, so we come to the last one in the pack and that's the AKW trade knife. First impressions on the trade knife was it was the beautiful girl of the, of the bunch. Um, David asked me uh, for a first impression of it and I gave it a nickname, Marilyn, because uh, from the moment I pulled it out, it it really had a beautiful classic look. It it really looks like you know your classic bush knife or hunting knife. Just the profile of it is uh, is elegant and nice to look at, and it just seems so um, beautiful. But a classic beauty, you know what I mean? That's why I thought of Marilyn Monroe because you know she's a she's a classic beauty as well. The trade knife is also made out of 1 8 inch high carbon steel 1095, but instead of a full flat grind, uh, you've got more of a, a close profile grind here. I'm not sure if it's uh, 35 degrees or 20 degrees, but you've got a close uh, edge here, a little bit different. And again, you've got a, a smaller handle that you can come up in close on the knife for doing finer work. So again, if you're if you're carving or you're making uh, feather sticks, anything like that, you're able to get in close on the blade and get some get some control on it. I've got the uh, I've got the slingshot here that I was working on. I was mostly using the uh, the warthog for it, but because of the close short handle on this knife, you'd be able to use this one equally as well because you can get get in close and you could use it for a draw knife too because you're close in on the blade. So that's that's nice with those smaller handles. Don't cut your thumb off. It's highly, highly frowned upon. 
But again, the trade knife is, is a beautiful knife. And you've got uh, David's Adirondack Knife Works uh, maker's mark there. And when we move over to t start talking about the sheath uh, for, the, for the trade knife, this is the one that uh, Matt down there at Valhalla Custom Kydex sent to us, uh, set up already for scout carry. So the belt clip is on the side uh, so that the knife rides horizontally across the back of your belt. Now, obviously you could probably put it here too, pull the knife out, but it all depends on, on what's comfortable for you. And uh, Matt sent it to us like this. Another thing was that this is uh, the one sheath out of the three that Matt made from a single piece of Kydex. Just as a comparison, you can see here, the other sheaths were made of two pieces and had rivets going all the way along. This sheath here is made from a single piece and it's folded over and riveted on one edge. So he's able to put what I thought was a neat feature here, uh, just kind of a little pushback so that when the knife slides in, you've got kind of like a little thumb release. You can just pull it out with one hand. I thought that was kind of a neat feature, just that little turn back there. And I was uh, glad to see that feature included on this sheath. And that, uh, like I say, I nicknamed it Marilyn, but that's the Adirondack Knife Works trade knife. Yeah, so I've been carving with this for a while. Coming in all around, getting the grip on the hand right, and up into all this really hard wood here, shavings all around me. And uh, I tried this a second ago, I was actually quite impressed. And I've been using it throughout the weekend for, you know, heavy duty tasks. And check this out. I just tested it a second ago. All this play, and I can still shave with it. Look at that. <laughs> and I've been carving with it, starting fires with it, and it's still shaving sharp. Talk about a good job on the heat treat. Just as hard as you could want. So while we're talking about Adirondack Knife Works, I want to talk a little bit about David Gray and his company and, and his attention to detail, attention to quality. Uh, David was recently featured in CNY Outdoor and Sports and on page 19 there's a nice little write-up and I'm just going to read a couple excerpts from it. Um, it says here, David Gray is fabricating custom knives that are beautiful, functional and built to last. You skip ahead a little bit and it talks about his personal touch and creativity showing through when he forms his knife with his grinder and hand files. The hunting and survival knives feature, feature handles made from micarta, diamond wood, kieranite, G10, oak, or maple. One of the other uh, nice points the article made was it was talking about all the different things that go into a knife. The angles, the bevels, what the handles are made out of, the blade length, the overall feel of the knife. They're all on the Adirondack Knife Works checklist. These are the things that he's looking at when he's producing a knife. When you commission a knife, David pays meticulous attention to the details for you. You can get anything you want. You can tell him what kind of handle you want. You can tell him what kind of blade length you want. You can tell him what kind of steel you want. You can tell him what kind of handle material you want. He's always learning and experimenting. And he says, and I quote, if I can't do it with one of my machines, I'll do it by hand. It's craftsmanship that makes Adirondack Knife Works Knife a blade you can count on. And I thought the article was done really well. And it kind of, you know, pointed out some of the same things that I noticed from handling his knives, the attention to detail. You know, here with the AKW uh, trade knife, you know, it's a beautiful knife to look at. Uh, just the the flow of the handle through the, through the steel, the way it feels in your hand, uh, you know, the lines, the angles, when you look at it, it's a beautiful knife. The, the Huntsman, got a beefier handle on it. Easy to, uh, I found I've been using this one quite a bit this weekend for getting feather sticks and stuff like that from softwood uh, for fires just because it's got a nice beefy handle on it. 
But for small close-up jobs, uh, I've really found that the Warthog has served me well. Especially, uh, you saw me there carving a bit with it because it's uh, made from 3 sixteenths. It's uh, so thick that you can really get a job done with it and it doesn't flex and you're not worried about, you know, uh, dulling it, easily sharpen it up. And you saw that from that little shave test I did with it. Let's take a minute and talk about some of his fire starting products next. Here's a couple of the fire making products that Adirondack Knife Works also offers. Uh, first I'll mention uh, his fatwood. You can get fatwood from David at Adirondack Knife Works. I'm not sure if he sends out the fatwood with every purchase, but he does send out the Adirondack Knife Works Hellfire with every purchase. This is a homemade recipe of David's and these fire starting pads can be used whole or broken in half or quarters so that you don't use them all up at once. But these are a great fire starting tool loaded up with his own custom recipe and uh, I think we'll try one of those in just a second. But another thing David's uh, able to make are custom ferroserum rods. This one here has a deer antler uh, for a handle. He's got a nice lanyard hold, lanyard hole in it, and not only is it epoxied into the handle, but we've got a brass pin here to hold it as well. And maybe I'll give you a little demonstration of the uh, warthog throwing some sparks off of this. And let's see if we can get the cameraman. But uh, with the three sixteenths, ninety degree spine on the back of the warthog, and uh, a beefy ferro rod like this, you're sure to get lots of sparks for your next fire. And this is a high quality ferro too. I mean, look at the sparks it's throwing. Now if you want to see one of these burn, I'm going to move it somewhere where it's not going to catch the whole thing on fire and we'll try it out. So let's take a closer look at Adirondack Knife Works Hellfire fire starting pads. David sends these out free with every knife order and I believe there's five or six pads in each tin. Now, Dave's tested them and they burn for about eight minutes per pad. You really don't need eight minutes of a fire starter. So what you can do is you can quarter these pads up. So you're getting 25, 30 fires uh, out of every tin. And really, you should reserve them, totally up to you, but I like to reserve them for hard to start fires uh, when you've got wet tinder and wet kindling because the, the proprietary custom fuel mix that he puts in these burns in just about any conditions. So the best way to use these is, is to prepare the pad by roughing it up a little bit, expose some of the, uh, the fibers of the cotton pad below, just rough them up a little bit, make yourself a nice little pad of fiber on the top of the fire starter. Get your ferro rod in place so that the sparks are going to fall directly onto it and just give her a couple strikes. Should be all you need. And you can let that start to burn a little bit and then if you've got some uh, small tinder and stuff you can you know slowly add it so that you don't choke the air out from it. Little curls work the best. But yeah, with one of these Hellfire pads, you'd have a rip and fire started in no time. I really hope you enjoyed that footage from my expedition weekend and I'd like to welcome you back to my own personal black fly hell. That being said, the knives were an amazing asset to the trip. Um, the Huntsman in particular I used all weekend making feather sticks, uh, starting fires and the, uh, the tent stove there you saw in other videos. The uh, Warthog I used a lot. You saw carving on that uh, that slingshot that I was working on and I really 
I really love the beauty, just the, the lines on the uh, trade knife. And I really appreciate that, David. Uh, you working so hard, especially right towards the end there, to get that all ready for the trip. And I'm also uh, so appreciative, David, uh, of you giving back to the community and my viewers uh, by way of helping me out with my 1500 subscriber giveaway. Guys, I'm pleased to announce that uh, with the release of this video and with its posting, you'll be able to uh, start commenting here on this video. Make sure you're a subscriber. Uh, make sure you thumbs up the video and leave a comment that you want to be entered. And we've got the prototype Warthog going out to one of you viewers. Uh, the Warthog, as you saw in the video, is 3 16th of an inch thick, 1095 high carbon steel. It's got a beautiful little choke up handle. You can get in there, do anything you want to do with it. Uh, the Warthog is going through some changes right now. Uh, this is a prototype model, so the knife you're going to get is one of a kind. And I really think it's going to last you a lifetime. David's workmanship uh, leaves nothing to be desired. Guys, uh, I really want to thank you for watching this video, uh, taking a look at the knives that David provided, the sheaths that Matt provided. I also want to uh, direct you guys to take a look at their, uh, the rest of their work. Uh, David's knives can be found at AdirondackKnifeWorks.com. Pretty straightforward. Go check that out. You can see a selection of his knives there and also on his Facebook group, Adirondack Knife Works. So check out uh, both of those venues. And as well, uh, Matt's sheaths. You can check him out at ValhallaCustomKydex.com. And you can see the, the variety of options that he provides there too. And again, guys, I'm so appreciative. Uh, 1,500 subscribers. To be able to uh, give this knife away to one of you guys. Uh, to think that you'll be out there, you know, uh, in the bush, in the woods, uh, in the backyard, playing around with uh, this custom knife uh, made by an amazing guy, David. Uh, it really, it makes me very excited. You know, uh, everything I've done with Outdoor Adventure Craft over the last year, uh, for it to culminate at this, it's, uh, it's special to me. And I, and I really hope uh, whoever uh, gets this knife uh, enjoys it as much as I as I have uh, over the time that I've had with it. So guys, comment, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all the normal fare, share this video with your friends, get more people involved. It makes it that much more exciting for everyone as we as we push forward, give away this knife, and, and we have a few more videos coming from the Winter Expedition. Uh, also, as always, guys, uh, take a look at OutdoorAdventureCraft.com. I write articles for my videos, try to get a little bit more in-depth, you know, retrospective. Uh, sometimes when I'm out filming, things happen a little quick and I, I, I don't always get it all out for you guys in front of the camera, so I can kind of do that in the videos. As well, you can find me on Instagram under Outdoor Adventure Craft and Facebook. And guys, I'd like to end this video on a, on a bit of a, a serious note. Uh, David at Adirondack Knife Works, who you've heard me talking about throughout the video, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he's not just a, a, a knife maker, but he's a friend to me. And he's going through uh, a real hard time right now. And it's not just him that's going through the hard time. It's actually his mom, Cindy Cater. And I want to dedicate this video uh, to Cindy. Uh, I hope you get a chance to see this, Cindy. Uh, you didn't just raise, uh, you know, a son. You raised a friend to me. You raised a, a craftsman. You raised a, an all-around honest individual someone that i've had a pleasure getting to know and i just wanted to pass that on to you cindy uh what a great guy i think david is and, and what a great job you did raising him and uh, i want to show my support uh, to you david and your mom to you cindy uh, for the the hard time that you guys are going through right now and i want to dedicate this video to you and uh, i hope that everything works out and i love you all so thanks everyone for joining us here on Outdoor Adventure Craft, and we'll see you next time.